so it's 31st of July. Um, India, sorted. Pakistan, stuck in pending, so I phoned them this morning. Could you give me an update on this? Da -da -da -da. Yes, fine. What's your passport number? Da -da -da. Right, okay. It's stuck in pending. What does that mean? It can mean one or two things. It's either missing a document or it's waiting for authorising. Right. Okay, but I received an email three weeks ago and I replied to you with a thing. I've also sent you an email every other day asking for an update. Okay, well, we will call you back. I've given my Turkish number. We don't accept Turkish numbers. You have to have a UK one. Ah, oh, it's fine. I've got my true phone. Right. Turk Sims blocked my true sim and my UK phones on their network and I can't get any other service provider here. So that's a big dilemma there. So I'm going to have to wait on an email. Anyway, as far as the Turkish visa, right, there's 16 days left on it. So 16 days to get out of the country. It's going to take five days to process the Iran visa. Need three days on a train. Need seven days to get it delivered from the UK to here. And any days in between to get from um, consulates to locations. So you're looking at 20 days. So you've got to make up 20 days in a 16 day period. It's not possible. Right, so the only other option is to leave the country can't do that without a passport but you can you can get a document from the british embassy saying that you are allowed to leave leave the country but you can't get um, you can't be allowed back in because you have to be a resident to be able to be allowed back in now the plan originally was to get my visa back and get it extended but they don't extend on tourist visas they only extend on residence thing so to get a residence thing i'll have to pay 107 pound it's 100 quid to leave the country anyway the flight to London is 87, and then to get back in, I'd have to apply for a Turkish visa. So the plan at the moment, and the worst case scenario, which I'm going to leave up until like the 14th and 15th, will be to fly to London, pick up my Pakistan visa, apply for a Turkish visa, move my Iran visa to London, get all the visas, and then fly back. And it's going to cost me about four or 500 quid to do this absolute nightmare all because pakistan embassy in london has been sitting on my passport for the last six weeks so i haven't had my passport since june and it's now going to be well it's the 31st <sighs> money 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 time 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 stress 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 it's not really stressful it's just one of those one of those situations but anyway if anyone has any uh, good ideas on this one of how to sneak out and sneak into countries and you know shit like that and uh, please uh, comment below. Cheers. Right, so, part two. I right, just had an email back from the Pakistan Embassy, and they said, uh, we've sent an email to your charity to ask for an employer reference. This is an employer reference that they've been sent twice in the past, sent, one, sent once with the application and once by email that I sent in the other week, and now they want it again. So this is the reason why, even though they've had it, idiots. Right, so they said, dilla, dilla, hopefully they'll be able to get it back tomorrow. So let's just say hypothetically that tomorrow Asset replied with an email. That would mean that that would bring us up to Wednesday. So Pakistan will process it Thursday. And let's just say, by miracle, they released it on Friday, which would be... Why are you going off? Which would be Friday the 3rd, right? So that would then travel back to Jersey unless it was intercepted by someone in, in London, you know, a family member or someone, if that's even possible. But we'll just say if it's going back to Jersey, right? So it would leave London on the, on the Saturday, say, right, and it'll be in Jersey for, like, the 6th. Now, no one's going to pick no one's gonna pick it up and send it till the 7th. And then we've got to allow 7 days, seven to 10 days for travel um, to get from Jersey to Istanbul. So we'll just say the 14th for that. So that's two days left on the visa. Now, you're going to have to go cycle to the consulate and get it processed. So that's another five to six days on top of that. But that's working days as well. So you've got a weekend there, which would take us up to like the Tuesday, right? And then to cycle to Ankara would be maybe the Friday. Now, the fact that you've got to book the train, because there's only one train a week um, going to Iran, and that's providing you can get a space on it, that would um, then... You would then be on that train for just say the 29th, and then it's three days out of there. So you'd probably get to Iran. I'm saying you, I would probably get to Iran or the uh, first or second, right? So that is an overstay of 15 days. Let's just say 15 days. Now, I've just been doing some research, and uh, they've tightened the rules now, but people who have been fined the last few years. 
the sober saying like the, for, to overstay is 150 lira and that's for one day and then after that it goes up like 15 quid a day so if you think 50 for the first day and then you've got 14 days of 15 quid so you're looking at a good few hundred and then there's rules like if you overstay one to 15 days you don't get banned but you pay the fine and then if it's something like 16 to 30 you get banned for like x amount of months and anything over that you get banned for like up to years and um, yeah, you have to pay the fines but they were saying there were people saying well if you leave by a boat then the chances of getting caught are like minimal but if you're going across borders like you're messing around with going out of Turkey and into Iran then someone's going to slam you so it's looking costly so really need to uh, pucker up an idea here it looks like you know I mean even you know they're, they're not going to release it today it's going to take a few more days to process I mean it's not going to get it's not going to be in someone's hand to at least Saturday or Monday. I mean, it might even be worth leaving and going and getting the Turkish extension in London on the Saturday, picking up the visa, and then that that will freeze my time. And I'll still have 16 days to come back. So I'd either get an extension or just risk the 16 days of flying back. I don't know. Watch this space. <laughs> Jersey, so I'm at IDO now, picked up my ticket and get the boat to Istanbul. Sounds I've just been to the uh, English consulate. I was in there for like two and a half, three hours and uh, basically go in there, you get this visitor pass, go through <laughs> security x-ray, they take your phones off you, they go through your bags because uh, Last year or the year before, there was a terrorist attack and it blew up all the uh, all the main gate and the gardens and that. So now they're extra cautious. But um, anyway, went in, filled out uh, an application form, gave them all the necessary paperwork, and uh, now I have this. So yeah, an emergency passport. Pretty cool though, isn't it? I've never seen one like that. But yeah, anyway, so I have a passport to leave the country which is good news. So now I can leave tomorrow, my flights are booked, and um, my Turkish visa will be frozen, and I will be back in the UK, and I don't have to worry about a fine or deportation or getting nicked or anything like that, so good step. Cool, so after getting my visa yesterday, I uh, walked down to um, the other side of the Galata Bridge, and I got a connecting train to Bakikoy, where I stayed last night. And now I am on the uh, first bus, the metro bus, to go from Bakikoy to the metro, to get the metro rail to the airport. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on quarter of the way home now, we say. So, we'll see what, we'll see what happens, if anything that does happen. Pretty around at the uh, metro rail, so I just need to figure out how to get a ticket. And then I can be on my way, so let's get another look. It's pretty full as well. Sound, so I got through a security check in the end. Uh, basically, went there. They looked at my passport, they were like, what's going on here? Where are you going? London. Are, are you from, are you, where, where have you been in Turkey? Just named everywhere I've been. Why have you been doing my business card? Like, okay, where's your passport? In London. So you haven't lost it? No. Why is it in London? Well, I applied for this visa, but I've got to go and collect it. Looking at it like that, really reluctant to stamp it. like Because no, there's no hologram or it's not laminated or anything. It looks like you could just make one for print off. Easy. <laughs> He's looking at me for ages because obviously I've got short hair in the picture and I've got long hair on my hair now, on my head now. And um, he just didn't want to stamp it. And I was showing him like the scans of my original passport, the, my original visa. They're looking at the date, which you can't see properly on it. It's 16th. I was like, look, we've got till 6th of August. And I was there for ages. And then in the end, he just went bang, bang, stamp, stamp. Off you go. So happy that he's through security. And I'm just walking around uh, 
the duty freeze now until I can board up in an hour. So whatever. That's the other thing they looked uh, puzzled around is he kept on looking at my t-shirt. And I've just figured out why now. Um, it says 9th of the May, World Environment Day in Turkish. So he's probably looking at my scan of my visa going, we only got here on the 16th. And looking at my t-shirt going, well, has he got a t-shirt from the 9th? So they're probably thinking, like, what, what's going on with this guy? He's got some half ass print a passport with a t-shirt, trying to think that he was here from the 16th. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm through anyway, but yeah, funny stuff. Sounds so, uh, landed safely. Um, that person didn't die. But, um, you know, there's plenty of paramedics that had come on, and ambulance and all that. He's sitting there with a breathing apparatus on. Anyway, in London, feels weird. UK Sterling, driving on the left. I'm not driving, but they're all driving on the left, which looks weird, because I've to change the direction that I look first now. And, uh, yeah, it just feels a bit weird, but it's only for a week. So I should be back in Eastern Bourne next weekend, or the weekend after the latest. And, uh, yeah, I suppose Enjoy my little vacation to the UK. Anyway, clever. Alright, so I'm just trying to find Lone Square, and that's where the uh, Pakistan embassy is. So I'm going to go in there and uh, see what the deal is with this place. Sounds. So I have my passport back and 104 quid in postal orders, so that's pretty good as well. Even though I would have lost out buying the post orders in the first place, but still, as a result, of one I didn't think I was going to get, seeing as they say they don't give refunds. But yeah, I can now go to Gatwick, fly home, and start booking things and, other, and making a proper plan on uh, what to do next. So, onto the tube. Terminal to the North Terminal. Uh, let's see, got up at like half five and did the red eye to here. Um, excited to um, go back to Istanbul. So, always something when I'm in an airport, and in this time, 15 mil spanner I brought with me. So, got stopped in Jersey for it, pulled my bag out, took everything out of it. <laughs> Why have you got a spanner? I need it, it's a tool I need. <laughs> Right, okay, on you go. Got to get it. Thought the same process would happen again. Got there, goes, but can't let you on with it. What do you mean? Well, with uh, airline policy, people might tamper with things that won't work. There's a load of things that are 50 mil on the plane, is there? And he looked at me, like, blankly. I said, right, what can I do about it? And he goes, I said, I need it, I need it. And he goes, well, you have to go and check your bag. I said, to be escorted out of there, out of um, the scanning place. Everyone was looking at me. I was some dodgy geezer with an Arsenal shirt on, and then I had to go and check my bag. And but who happened to be a bloody Man United fan? So I've had to, that's, the, that's the level of shit I've had to deal with this morning. You know, just scums, man. Anyway, in the airport now, and I'm going to be getting my flight at five to eleven. So till then. So starting to uh, descend to Istanbul. And it's. Uh, 30 degrees outside, so yeah, I left it was like 17. It wasn't even that this morning, but at the best of the day that I've been at home, it's been 17. So 30 degrees, I'm going to be sweating. Yeah. All right, so we're starting to land. Just look down the window, and over there, when it focuses in the uh, background there, that's. Uh, well, Yalabar area where I'm going to be getting my boat to. Too, so.
Turkey Town. Right, now I've got to get back through passport control with my only stamp from when I came in here on the 16th of May. <laughs> Like, why haven't you got the exit stamp? Well, it's in my emergency passport. We'll see what happens. Passport control. Fucking nightmare. So, what did I expect? A hold up. Queued for about 45 minutes. Got to a desk. Looked at my thing. Where's your exit stamp? Because you know, I'm coming, in, I'm coming back, back to this place with already an entrance stamp. I'm thinking, well, how have you gone and come back? Show the emergency thing. What the hell is this? Go down to the domestic, police, police, the police thing or whatever. Went down there, you need to go and buy a visa. I said, look, I'm not stupid. I can't get another visa, because that'll be two lots of 90 days within 180 period. I've got 11 days left, let me in. I know that I've got at least a week. So there were loads of phone calls, came back. <laughs> Reluctantly, just grabbed the passport, stamp, off you go, thank you. Anyway, so now I need to find my bags. And I'm home. It's crazy, man. This is like, I feel more at home here than what I did back in like the UK, walking around Jersey and stuff like that. Just get back and just seem to just slot right back in. I know where everything goes and everywhere everyone's doing. It sounds. But, um, uh, need to go and get the boat now, which, um, you know, thanks to the passport control, I've left, cut it fine, so I had to get the metro to Hat Shadow and then take a 20 minute walk down the road to Yenny Cappy to get the boat. But, like I said, you know, when you're a local, you know these ones. I'm not quite a local, but one day, maybe. Anyway, off the boat. Well impressed. Um, paid, booked this a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they didn't send me a uh, confirmation email. So I was thinking, oh, here we go, I'm going to have to go to the ticket desk and all this crap and, you know, show them my passport and prove that I paid for it. Just went there before, said to a guy, I was like, do you just swipe like, the credit card you paid for them with? And he goes, yeah, swipe the thing, boom, ticket straight away. Sorted, man. But anyway, I'm in completely the wrong place. Why am I going here? Right, let's find the boat. This is quite funny. So, there's no buses to Kirkcoy uh, at this time of night. Right, I can't see what I'm doing at this time of night. So, um, I had to get them onto Kadikoy down the road. I got off the bus and um, this car came up behind me and started beeping. I was like, what, what? And they, this guy ran down a window. Do you want a lift? I was like, yeah. So he's like, right, get in the other side. Walked around the other side, got in, and obviously left hand drive. And then I, then I spotted a, a kid in the in the front seat, and I thought, I must be right hand drive. Realised, no, he's the driver. He was 10. And they're just letting him drive around. Bloody mad, this man. I got out of the car, I was going, cheers, kid. And I think he thought I was like giving him a tip, so he's like putting his hand out, so I just whacked it and walked off. But, uh, anyway, back in Kirkcoy. Now I feel home. Wild dogs.